And the guy that put all of this together is the guy that I'm going to introduce to you right now. And you know what he's going to explain to you? We get asked questions all the time from people. Well, now let's see. Now I've heard about these, these electric charging machines, these ionizer things that they change the structure of the water to alkaline, and, and you know they say they're better, and, and I don't know. I mean, how does that stack up to what we have, and, and how, you know, how does it work in your body, and all of that stuff? Well, we get asked these questions all the time. So Fred said, you know something, I'm going to address that tonight. And so Fred is on our call, and he's become a good friend of mine. We've never met, only on the telephone, but I feel like I've known him for 100 years. And um, i got to tell you something. He's a very gracious man. He promised me that if I came over to visit him that they'd set up a desk for me. And he said, I know that we've got a couple of boxes that we can put up and put a nice piece of plywood on top of it. And he said, Randy, we'll set up a desk for you. And I said, that would be wonderful. Now, Fred, I'm giving you a bad time. But listen, he's become my mentor, my friend. He is the chief cook and bottle washer, the owner, the CEO, the inventor of our products, Mr. Fred Kaufman. Fred, are you there? Yes, thank you, Randy. And I just want the people to know it was going to be a really nice piece of plywood. So there, just to clear that up. <laughs> oh, Randy, thank you so much. And thank you, Penny. And thank you to everyone who took their time to be on the call tonight. And we want to make sure that you get your money's worth. And for anybody that doesn't think they got their money's worth on this call, call Randy and he'll give you a refund for what you paid. So anyway, we we have had a lot of people join our company and they have been out there telling other people about our wonderful products, our core products, Aqualite and Ionite. And they get resistance sometimes from people who say, well, I've been looking at this whole idea of acid alkaline balancing. It's all over the Internet. I was one of the pioneers back, oh, my gosh, uh, probably I'm going to say about 35 years ago. That's a long time ago. And I was one of the first people talking about acid alkaline balancing. And it was because of a wonderful book that I had read, and it gave me the first plausible explanation for why we have health problems. And it really made a lot of sense because we are about 70% water, our blood's about 90% water, and you have to think about the chemistry of that water. If the chemistry of the water in an aquarium is important to the life of a fish, then it ought to be important to us because with our bodies being 70% water, you might think to yourself, well, where is all that water? It's not just in your bladder. It's in and around your cells. So you have to think of your cells, which you have 70 to 100 trillion cells, as being like little fish in an aquarium. The water that makes up the cell and the water that the cell is surrounded by, it makes a difference. And one of the differences is the simple measurement of the pH. Now, I'm going to explain that to you real quickly here. Most people don't have a clue what pH means. They've heard about it. They've, they've learned maybe something very simple that 7 is neutral on a scale of 1 to 14, 1 being very acidic, 14 being very alkaline. But they really don't know what that means. Well, it's very simple, and I'm going to make it all come together for you in a very simple way by adding one more letter, C. So think of this. pH means potential hydrogen, and it refers to what we all know as the uh, two-thirds of a water molecule is hydrogen. You've heard, it, heard of H2O. It's two ions of hydrogen coupled with one ion of oxygen. So two-thirds of a water molecule is nothing more than hydrogen. But if you could really see water, you would see that there's a lot of H2O, and there are also some H's that haven't bonded with any O's yet. And then there are some H's that bonded with an O, but it's by itself, so they call it an OH or even a technical term hydroxyl molecule. But the idea is that pH refers to 
the concentration of the H. If there's a, a really high concentration of H, then you have something that is acidic. If there's not much concentration or a low concentration of the H, the hydrogen, then you have something that's alkaline. So now let's look at this again. pH, potential hydrogen, let's throw in that letter C that represents concentration. So potential hydrogen concentration. The lower the number, the less potential there is for hydrogen to concentrate because it's already concentrated. The higher the number, the more potential there is for hydrogen to concentrate because there's not much of those loose hydrogen ions floating around in the water. So THC, potential hydrogen concentration, and that should bring this into a more simplistic way of looking at it. So the best thing that you can have is a pH that's just slightly alkaline. In fact, your brain is very specific about prioritizing the pH of your blood at, at a pH between 7.35 and 7.45. That's a very narrow window. But the brain does whatever it has to to keep that pH at that level because that's where you're the healthiest. And so if you look at the pH of the things that you eat and the things that you drink, you start to get an idea of how this pH can change from being slightly alkaline, which is healthy, to then starting to become more acidic, which isn't very healthy. And there's a couple reasons for that. But first of all, just think of it this way. Almost without exception, everything that's cooked, canned, or processed is acidic. Practically every single liquid that is a base of water but has had other things added to it, flavorings, coffee, tea, even fruit juices that are basically water but you've got this uh, fruit juice added to it, and even fresh squeezed fruit juices, they're most of the time slightly alkaline but if you want to have those stored uh, for a long period of time, you put them through some processes which makes them more acidic. And you have your citric acid fruits, the oranges, and we, of course one of our favorites is orange juice, a breakfast beverage. Um, you have grape juice, you have uh, other kind of juices, tomato juice. All of these things, even though you would think that they are really good for you, they're actually on the acid side. And a lot of nutritionists out there blow it off and they say, well, once the cell metabolizes those juices, it produces an alkaline ash. So there's actually combustion that takes place. Your cells are actually creating heat because they're combusting these little particles of nutrients from the food that you eat along with oxygen and that's how your body maintains heat but the result of that combustion if you are eating something in the way of a raw fruit or vegetable or a raw juice from a fruit or vegetable even though it might be acidic when it goes into your system that combustion process produces an alkaline ash so they say that's okay but hold on wait a minute here Remember what I said about the brain keeping the blood at a pH of 7.35 to 7.45? I guarantee you if you drink a very acidic fruit juice or even one that is mostly diluted with water but it's flavored with something like lemon juice, lemon juice is very acidic. I guarantee you that's going to cause a lowering of the pH of your blood. And the brain can't allow that to happen. Remember, the brain's trying to keep you alive, trying to keep you healthy. And when the pH starts to drop, it calls on these little buffers that it has created that are made from minerals to buffer that pH, to raise that pH back up into that zone of 7.35 to 7.45. So it does make a difference. Remember, everything that your cell gets comes from the blood. So if you're eating something, even though it might be a raw fruit, maybe it's raw fruit juice, 
that maybe you've added some lemon juice to some water. If it's acidic, it's going to affect the pH of your blood long before the blood ever delivered those nutrients that may end up being combusted into and produce an alkaline ash. Long before that, it has affected in a, in a harmful way the pH of your blood. Now, it's just a temporary thing, but I'm just saying everything that you eat, everything that you drink affects your pH. And so I was so excited when I found out that if you could just become more alkaline, you could be healthier. And so I went about learning how do you become more alkaline, and I learned this. Very simple. Almost without exception, everything that you eat that's raw, every kind of fruit or vegetable that you eat raw is alkaline. So there's the secret. You just eat raw fruits and vegetables. And if you only drink mineral water, mineral water is usually just slightly alkaline. Usually it doesn't have a lot of minerals in it and not a wide variety. So it'll be just slightly alkaline, a little above seven. If you do that, you can raise naturally your pH to be in that perfect range of 7.35 to 7.45. Now, the problem is, have you ever done that? Have you ever eaten just nothing but raw fruits and vegetables, no animal products of any kind, no cooked, canned, or processed food of any kind, and only drank mineral water, no coffee, tea, fruit juices, no soft drinks, no alcoholic beverages, nothing but just mineral water and raw fruits and vegetables? Have you ever done that? Well, I did, and I'll tell you something. After a number of months, I just got tired of it. And in fact, it presented a problem because if I was going to come over to your house to, uh, for dinner, I'd either have to bring my own food or I'd have to impose on you and say, hey, I don't know what uh, else you've got in the fridge, uh, but that meatloaf you just cooked up with the potatoes and carrots and uh, whatever else you've got to go with it, I can't eat that. I only eat raw fruits and vegetables. So it, it became very constricting, and especially if I was going to travel. And you know what happened? After a while, my body was so used to having just the raw fruits and vegetables, which is the healthiest way that you could possibly eat. Whenever I did eat cooked, canned, or processed food, it felt like my liver was going into convulsions. My body just wasn't used to it anymore. And so finally, I just had to give it up mainly because of convenience. And here I was teaching people, if you've got a really serious health problem, you can go a long way to help yourself by making your body more alkaline through this very, very restrictive diet of just simply raw fruits and vegetables and mineral water. If you can do that, but most people couldn't. And so I remember uh, having spent hours and hours teaching people with some very serious problems how to eat a raw fruit and vegetable diet and, and just drink mineral water. And some of these people, knowing my mother, would contact her and say, hey, I just spent several hours with your son, and man, he really knows a lot about health and a lot about food, but is he serious? I can only eat raw fruits and vegetables? I don't know if I can do that. And so my mom kept saying to me, Fred, you've got to find a better way. I said, Mom, this is all I know. She said, well, keep searching. So I did. I kept researching. And I'm going to throw one other thing in there. I prayed about it. I said, God, you've got to show me a better way. And God answered my prayer. I was contacted by a man from Sweden who was a brilliant uh, researcher on health. And in particular, at that time, he was doing a lot of work researching about cancer. And he agreed with me. He said, the, the best thing that you can do to help yourself whenever you've got a serious health problem is you've got to try to become more alkaline. And so we shared information back and forth. And one day he called me up and he said, Fred, I think minerals are far more important than vitamins. Now, I didn't know what he was leading me into. It took me a while because we had to search the world over to find the best mineral product. But lo and behold, skipping forward and shortening the story, he called me up and he said, I think I found it. And I said, what's that? And he said, 
coral calcium from Okinawa. Now, I didn't like the name coral calcium because it was way more than just calcium. It was a full spectrum of minerals. But he said, this is the best mineral product in the world. And I said, well, I've got, to, I've got to know about it. I've got to try some. I've got to get some samples of this stuff. So he connected me with the company that at that time had the world rights. I'm working directly with the inventor now in Japan. But at that time, he connected me with this company, and they sent me some samples. And to, so to test it out, I stopped taking all the uh, supplements I was taking at that time. Remember, I knew a lot about supplements, and I was taking about 35 different I shouldn't say different, 35 tablets and capsules a day. Some were multiple multiples of the same product. But I was taking about 35 tablets and capsules a day, and I stopped all that because I wanted to be uh, totally pure in my judgment of this product, so I wanted to see what it would do all by itself. And I even had other people try it on that basis. And I would have people come to me because I had a, you might say, a, a practice. I had clients that would come to me and they'd want my advice because I had a reputation for helping people, even people that were really in, in serious trouble. And so they would come to me and instead of spending an hour teaching them about eating raw fruits and vegetables and only drinking mineral water, I wouldn't say any of that. I would just say, you know what, put these little packets of minerals into your water and just drink at least a half a gallon a day. Let me know what happens. And people would look at me sideways, and they thought, what, that's it? And they would come back, and sometimes with the most extraordinary testimonials. And I thought, wow, how can this be? I didn't think it was possible to become healthy before you changed your diet. I thought that was an integral part of restoring health, was going on this really restrictive diet. And yet people weren't doing that. They were just drinking this water with aqualite in it, and they were coming back with these Extraordinary testimonials. Well, after looking at these granules and seeing that they didn't dissolve, and I thought, man, it's not even that much. I mean, there are, there are products out there when you take a capsule, it's like 500 milligrams. Some of them are 1,000 milligram tablets of minerals. And I thought, how can this be? This is a small amount of minerals because I pulled those sachets out of the water, and it didn't matter if I left it in there an hour, a day, a week, a month. That little packet of minerals didn't look like anything had dissolved, but I knew minerals were coming out of those granules into the water, but I thought it must be a very small amount. How could that be? How could people be restoring their health without changing their diet and just drinking this water where I knew not really a huge volume of minerals were coming into the water? I thought, what in the world? And then... It just so happened that my curiosity got the best of me, and I tried to figure out how to make these little granules dissolve further. And it was a young lady named Kim, who now is my wife, who eventually led me to a secret to invent the ionite. And I did the same thing again. I didn't even take the aqualite. I just took ionite in my water. And again, I thought, this is just crazy. I know there's not much in the way of volume of, of minerals in here. There were, uh, it was with the addition of organic complexes from plants that sort of fortified it to, a, to a, another level. But I couldn't believe it. This was so simple. Putting these two mineral products together was even better. I got even more health benefits. And I thought, how could it be so simple? Here, you, you, you've got to realize how many years, uh, even working in two different medical clinics where I would sit down being paid by medical doctors to teach people how to restore their health. The doctors would prescribe medicines to get them out of trouble, but then I would teach them how to eat uh, to uh, have longer lasting results and, and get back on the right track to health. And all of a sudden, all of that wasn't even necessary anymore. Now, for any of you who, who think that I'm saying you don't have to eat healthy to be healthy, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that the most important thing that you could possibly do for yourself to restore your health is not to stop eating cheeseburgers and pizza. Now, it's a good idea for some people to cut back on, on what they're eating if they're eating just cheeseburgers and pizza. But what I'm saying is the most important thing you could, that you could do is to put minerals in your water, ideally aqualite and ionite, because those are the two best mineral products on the planet. 
And if you have not seen my video, I think I make a pretty good argument as to why that is. So if you haven't seen the video on the website, diseased or deficient, you got to see it. So let's skip forward here just a little bit because I've got something real important to tell you. So now I've got all these amazing testimonials coming from people. They thought I was a hero. If I wanted to run for mayor, people probably would have elected me because I was such a hero at helping people restore their health, just in my own community. And then when I hooked up with network marketing and got it out to people in other countries even, let alone all over the U.S., I became even more of a hero. And then something weird happened. I started getting bombarded from people saying, hey, Fred, I know of another way you can become more alkaline. I know another way that you can make alkaline water. And they start talking about these expensive devices. They, they look kind of like a water filter, but you've got to plug them in. And they're called ionizers. And what the ionizer does is it uses electricity. I won't get into all the specifics of it, but it uses electricity to create alkaline water. And it even goes one step further. The water actually becomes antioxidant. Well, that's what was happening when I put the aqualite into, into water. It became more alkaline, and it became antioxidant water, and it became more absorbable. It, it breaks up the uh, water molecules that are, that are clustered together. It breaks them up into smaller clusters. And these ionizers, people told me, were doing the same thing. So I had to investigate because this was competition. And if it turned out that these ionizers were every bit as good as the aqualite and ionite, then I was in trouble. I had a lot at stake here. I had told people this was the best. So I started to investigate. And then a really strange thing happened. I had people who were using my products that stopped taking my products, even though they had had wonderful things happen to improve their health, they stopped taking my products and bought into this science of the water ionizer, electrocuting water to change it. And everything was rosy for a while, and I, I, I was really, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you, I was really kind of frightened that this was going to cause a collapse of my business. But then something interesting happened. I would get phone calls back from these people, sometimes months later, one lady, it took a whole year, and she called me up and she said, Fred, I had really severe back pain that cleared up when I started using Aqualite and Ionite in my water. And she, for years, used those products because she believed in them. She told a lot of other people about them. This was before Basic Reset. And I didn't hear from her for about a year, and she called me up and she said, I didn't realize how important minerals were. I thought the whole thing was, do you have alkaline water? Didn't matter how you arrive at it. Is it alkaline? And she said, so I bought into that. In fact, she bought into it to the tune of $4,000. I'm not going to mention the name of the company. For any of you who have been approached with someone selling water ionizers, you probably can figure out who I'm talking about. But she spent, spent $4,000 on this device. And she said, it wasn't but about two weeks, and my back pain came back. And I called the person who sold me the ionizer, and I said, hey, what's going on here? My back pain came back. I thought you said this would be every bit as good as the aqualite and ionite. And they said, well, no, I didn't say that it was all you need. I said, it's the main thing. You need other supplements. So she started buying other supplements, still didn't get rid of her back pain. A year she went through this trying one thing after another after another, still drinking this expensive water. And finally, she found a bottle of ionite in a drawer, part of a bottle. And she, she found that bottle, and she got it out, and she started putting those ionite drops into her uh, expensive water, ionized water. And in just a few days, her back pain went away, and she called me up. She said, you were right. I should have listened to you. But she said, I got led down a rabbit trail. Somebody telling me I didn't need your products. Now, let me tell you what happened. You see, you can have science, and science is very good if it's done properly. But sometimes scientists spend too much time looking through a microscope and not enough time looking through binoculars, and here's what I mean by that. 
if you spend all your time looking through binoculars, I mean through um, a microscope, what you see is alkaline water. And to a scientist, if the end result is alkaline water, they don't really care how you arrive at that, whether it's electricity or whether it's minerals. They don't see any difference because the end result is alkaline water. But they're missing something. It's not natural to electrocute water. Lightning strikes our planet thousands of times somewhere on our planet. And our planet is, some say, 60 to 70% water. So you can imagine lightning is striking water a lot. And yet the water's not changed. And in fact, a water ionizer electrocuting the water doesn't it doesn't stay changed in fact this company that has this four thousand dollar machine they admit it's kind of a dirty little secret but they they admit their water expert admits that it doesn't stay changed it reverts back and in fact it reverts back sometimes within hours but certainly within 24 hours that water has revert reverted back to what it was before it was changed with electricity. So how can you really change your overall pH if the water you're drinking is changing back to what it was before? It doesn't seem like it's a permanent solution to me. And in fact, when you talk to people that are promoting these ionizers, a lot of times they're very knowledgeable people about health in general. And they talk about eating organic food. They talk about eating... I mean, uh, taking uh, uh, high-quality supplements. But then they kind of get off the rails, and they talk about electrocuting water. Now, that's about as unnatural as you can possibly get. So what is the natural way in nature that water is changed to be alkaline? Because there are places in the world where you can find alkaline water. And guess what? In these five or six places where the water is alkaline and it's antioxidant and it has a high permeability rate to your cells, this water is always, no exceptions, it's always changed because of the mineral content of the water. Now, doesn't that seem like really more natural? In fact, the top of the list of the places in the world where you can get this healthy, alkaline, antioxidant, mineral-rich water, is Okinawa. And these people live longer and are healthier than any place else on the planet. So if you had a choice and you want to do things naturally or do things artificially, I think most of you would agree the best thing, the right thing to do is to do things naturally because you can't go out there and talk out of one side of your mouth and then talk uh, one thing and then talk out of the other side of your mouth something else. And if you're talking about electrocuting water to arrive at something, and then uh, the other side of your mouth you're talking about eating um, natural, wholesome foods, it's a contradiction. Now let me tell you one other thing that people talk about. And that is, do we really need minerals? Oh my gosh. The simple answer to that is absolutely, you cannot be healthy if you're mineral deficient. You just, it's just not going to happen because every process in your body is dependent on minerals. And guess what? Everything that your cells receive comes from the blood, and the blood's 90% water. That means the minerals, in order to be properly absorbed, have to be in the water. And they have to be in a small enough state that they can actually penetrate the cells. So that doesn't mean that they're just dissolved in water it means that they're actually part of the water. And when they become part of the water, if you have the full spectrum of minerals, they change the water in some very mysterious ways, healthy ways. And that translates to you becoming more healthy. Let me tell you one last thing about these water ionizers. When you make water of, let's say, a pH 9.5, which is typically what they promote, your blood, as I mentioned, carries everything that your cells are going to get. Everything the cell receives comes from the blood. And what did I say in the beginning about the brain? It keeps that pH at a 7.35 to 7.45. So if you drink pH water, uh, I mean water of a pH 9.5, 
the brain is going to do whatever it can to bring that pH down so it fits into those parameters. So 9.5, it's never going to be 9.5 when it reaches your cells. It can't. The brain's not going to allow it. So what do you get? You get water that's going to be about a 7.45. But if the water was changed with minerals, the minerals are what the body uses to regulate, self-regulate its own pH. In other words, if you want to really make a long-lasting impact on your pH, you want to do it with minerals, minerals in water. Because now your brain is able to call upon those reserves, those buffers made from minerals to regulate your pH. So if you do go out and eat an occasional cheeseburger or pizza or have an occasional beer or a soft drink, it's not going to really harm you like it would otherwise if you were just drinking ionized electrocuted water because with that, all you have is the minerals that were in the tap water. We know that that's not all you need or people would be healthy just drinking tap water or filtered tap water. The minerals aren't there. And we already know, I'm not even going to get into the fact they're not in our food. So where are we supposed to be getting those minerals that we can't be healthy without? You're not. And the ionizer doesn't solve that problem. But when you put aquite and ionite in the water, not only do you get healthy alkaline water, but you, you get the minerals that your body's going to then use to help regulate, self-regulate the pH. Now, let me tell you the, the proof of that. A guy called me up, and he told me how he wanted to help me market the uh, aqualite because it had saved his life. And when he told me what was wrong, I won't get into all the details, but when he told me what was wrong, he concluded with saying the doctor told his wife he may as well make funeral arrangements because he's not going to be around long and there's nothing we can do about it. And he found out about our aqualite, started putting it in his water, and in just a few weeks, he couldn't believe it, neither could the doctor. His health had been turned around 180 degrees. And I asked him, I said, how are you using it? He said, just like I was told, I, I was putting one sachet in a gallon of water. Now, the reason I bring that up is a very important one. Putting one sachet in a gallon of water, it's not going to change the pH. It's just not. But the minerals were there that his body needed to self-adjust, self-regulate his internal pH. That's the most important thing you can do to help your body regulate its own pH. And then we have people talk about, Fred, what's the best way to test my pH? Well, let me tell you something. If you've been paying attention, you already know the answer. Unless you're going to be only eating raw fruits and vegetables and drinking nothing but mineral water, you're going to have a lot of acidic influences. So don't even bother testing your pH. It really is kind of a futile attempt to learn something about your body that's inaccurate. And very seldom does anybody have laboratory testing of their pH. And a lot of times people will say, well, Fred, when I want to make myself more alkaline, I put some baking soda in water because it makes very alkaline water, and I drink that and I test the pH of my urine with these little test strips that I got from the health food store, and voila, my pH is real high. Well, guess what? What do you think your urine is made of? It's the stuff that your kidneys filtered out of the blood, the stuff that shouldn't be there, the stuff that could cause you harm. It gets it out of the blood as fast as it can. And where does it show up? In the urine. The urine is what your kidneys have filtered out of the blood. And so here's this excess of sodium bicarbonate that the, the kidneys are like, whoa, what are you trying to do here? We don't need all that sodium bicarbonate, so it pulls it out. And now this person tests the urine and says, ha, huh, I'm really alkaline. But all they're testing is baking soda water. It's in the form of urine because it was filtered out of the blood. But that's all they're testing is baking soda water. Now, the other thing they do is they say, well, I don't test my urine. I test my saliva. That's a representation of the blood. Well, yeah, but guess what? If you're dehydrated, 
your saliva tests more alkaline. I I have found people who, by their description of how they live, their lifestyle, what they eat, what they drink, they had to be acidic. What goes in is going to influence what's the in, inside of you. These people were eating and drinking acidic, and yet their saliva showed alkaline. And they said, well, I don't need your products. I'm already alkaline. But yet they had health problems. And I knew they had to be acidic. And I found out why they tested alkaline. Because when you're dehydrated, your saliva has a higher concentration of whatever minerals are in your body. A higher concentration. So it tests alkaline. But it's actually telling you two things are wrong. One is you're dehydrated. And number two, this is a false reading. You're actually acidic. So the conclusion, don't even bother wasting your time. It's not relevant. If you test the pH of your saliva, you got the pH of the saliva. If you test the pH of the urine, you've got the pH of the urine. What's the pH of your blood? Well, you got to test the pH of the blood. And then what does that tell you about the pH of your leg or your arm? It doesn't. You just tested the blood. So we have to put this into perspective. As I said, instead of spending all this time trying to test, just know, unless you're only eating raw fruits and vegetables, it's not very likely that you're going to be alkaline. But you can offset those things, cook, can, process food, the things that we like to drink on occasion that we know aren't healthy, healthy for us, but you can offset that by giving your body the minerals it needs to self-regulate the pH in the form of aquite and ionite in your water. Now, I hope I didn't get too complicated, but I just want you to know, I, I didn't just, as my wife sometimes says, this isn't my first rodeo. I have spent a lot of time defending aqualite and ionite, and sometimes people would come along and they'd have some drops. They said, look, you just put 10 drops in a liter of water, and it'll raise the pH to a 10. And then I found out that these drops had the key ingredient that matched the key ingredient in liquid Drano. Yeah, liquid Drano is not acidic like you might think. It's very, very alkaline, and something that is, is extremely alkaline has the same caustic effect as something that's extremely acidic. So how do you want to help your body to be more alkaline, which is going to put your body in a healthier state? Electricity, chemicals, or do you want to do it the natural way? the way that it occurs in nature and the way that it occurs occurs for the healthiest, longest living people on the planet. I think you'll choose the same thing I did, and that's aquite and ionite. Randy, I hope I didn't get too long-winded and I hope I didn't bore people, but this is a, a very important subject, so I just want to empower people to know how to respond to others who say to them, oh, I don't need your stuff, I've got an ionizer. No, Fred, you did absolutely fine. And, uh, you know, when you speak, nobody gets bored because everything that you tell us is, I mean, you you not only explain it to us, you know, telling us what it is, but you do it in such a way that we understand it. And I think that's an bl absolute blessing. And I want to thank you for, for getting on the call again tonight and, and sharing that with us and letting us know um, uh, what the differences are because I know I get asked the question a lot. And, um, and, you know, I really didn't know how to answer it the correct way either now that I've listened to you. so But now I know. As a matter of fact, what's really cool about this, Fred, is if you have somebody that's wondering about this, now I believe this call tonight is actually going to be call number 50 on the recording, but you literally could, somebody questions you about this, you could send them to call number 50 and say, hey, go listen to call number 50. And uh, you will find out. You'll hear right from Fred as to why there's a difference between those machines. And um, and then, by the way, when you're there, you're also going to hear about why our company is considered such an ethical company. And uh, so we, it, it was really great. So, Fred, I thank you for being here again. Penny, I want to thank you for welcoming everybody. And I want to thank you guys that are listening. See, this call wouldn't be a call if it wasn't for you. So remember these famous words that I always say when I end everything that I do. Wherever you go, there you are. 
always make the most of it because if you don't, I guarantee you nobody's going to do it for you. So we'll see you all next Thursday night. Have a wonderful weekend coming up. God bless you, and good night, everybody.